Hello and welcome to this Brave Dojo video discussing the early ESS meta and fittings. Let me introduce myself. I'm Pearl Sagan and I love Haifa. Uh, forgive me for the unprofessional start. Uh, my video editor is messing up, so I'm going to try doing it all this in one take. Uh, and yeah, we'll get started. Um, so the meta hasn't really evolved yet into something that's firmly established. It's only been a, a week or two since the update has gone live. Um, as you can see, I am in a phantasm in a bubble for demonstration purposes. And if you don't know about how this bubble works already, uh, you can't micro jump drive, you can't micro warp drive, you can't sino, and you can't use a bit of filaments. So it is quite restrictive. A good example of a similar fighting condition would be is if you are stuck in a catch bubble and you are scrammed alongside everyone else, which is very bad news. Uh, once you enter the acceleration gate, which has quite a forgiving range, around about 75 to 100 kilometers you will always land on this beacon so that changes the meta alongside having no micro warp drive available for use so we're going to talk about three things today and then we're going to put it towards some kind of plan towards the fittings that will be available and, and how this shapes the meta so we're going to talk about uh, the current meta outside of these bubbles, how roughly it works and what works and what doesn't. We're going to talk about a similar meta that happened earlier this year with uh, an abyssal arena event. And then we're going to talk about the early tactics that people have been using in these bubble environments. Um, I would say probably the easiest to do first would probably talk about the early findings and tactics so ever since this has gone out there has been a lot more people wanting to brawl because brawling is more difficult to get good fights out of because of the current meta which i will talk to next there's been a lot more brawling because people have been missing it and people find it fun it's reasonable enough uh, doesn't mean it's the most effective tactic. Uh, that may or may not be the case. We don't know yet. The meta isn't fully solved yet. Uh, but people find it fun, so people are doing it more. Um, another tactic people are doing is that they are positioning themselves 30 to 50 away from the bubble. And they are engaging at those ranges while also using tactics like E-War or Speed to keep them away, which is quite And then very far away, you can have sniper ships as well. But the main finding is that there's been people wanting brawls, and they've been wanting to brawl right around this area. Again, you warp into this beacon, everyone knows you land at zero. That means if it's a brawling ship, and you warp into this site in something that's very squishy, for example, a battleship that's meant for sniping, it will die horribly. And there's been a lot of kill modes this past first week or two where people in kitchen sink fleets have been going in nightmares, mercarials, uh, even a marshal, and they died quite promptly. <laughs> so be wary that if you want to enter these sites, uh, be aware and be mindful of what you're going to be fighting up against. You can use local and you can also use D-Scan as well. I just sit outside the gate, one AU scan, see what's inside. Okay, right. So um, we'll, we'll actually talk about the meta that we do know that was very similar to this environment. So earlier on in this year, there was an event for Abyssal Arenas. Uh, so it was a similar thing. We had like a bubble uh, of X kilometers and all the T1 cruisers went to fight it out to each other. Now that doesn't tell us much, but 
what it does tell us is what weapon systems work and what tactics work for cruisers. Um, and then we can expand our knowledge about what we know works and then expand it out to the rest of the battle cruisers and the battleships. Okay? Okay. So the cruisers that came out on top were the Caracal and the Vexa. Now, why did these two particular ships come out on top? Uh, the reason is because they can fight very far away, apply excellent damage very far away, and they are hard to counter while also dealing damage very far away. The Caracal has rapid light missile launchers. Um, even though it does a high burst of damage and a high reload time uh, for the weapon system for rapid light missile launchers, um, it's able to keep no damage on itself, so it's able to do damage and take none, which is very, 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 very powerful. Uh, the rapid light missile launcher launches light missiles, and the light missiles do next to perfect damage application, which is really important uh, because you're seeing, because there's no micro drives, you're seeing a lot more afterburners. Afterburners are very good at mitigating damage, even though they are slower than micro drives. So they do perf they're, they're very, very nasty. Um, and people should be flying more caracals. All, all, all hail caracals. Don't, don't hail Sagan. All, all hail caracals. Um, they're too good. They really are. And then you got the Vexer. Uh, the Vexer does the same thing. It can launch its drones. It could be very far away. It could apply full damage. And have no damage put on itself. But it's a bit easier to counter. Uh, it's because you can shoot the drones. Uh, but the thing is, is that you're slowly whittling away these drones as those drones are slowly stripping apart your shield and armor. And you might not make it in time before you, <laughs> you explode. Um, so that, that, so just to give you an idea of like what weapon systems are very good in these arena environments and if you are fitting a ship yourself just think oh actually this is the benefits these are the drawbacks if i want to make a ship fit myself i should probably prefer one of these two missile systems because they're better than everything else currently okay okay and we'll look at the current meta so look at my beautiful art skills as you can see here uh, just ignore this for now, so I'm just going to delete it. Lovely. So, here's the standard meta. Micro drives, you can warp in, warp out, whenever you're so freely available. Um, this is a general idea. So, say you're on uh, a gate camp, uh, on a gate at zero, and everyone's at the preferred ranges, say. So, this brawling little ship right isn't going to be able to keep up with the kaiju ship the kaiju ship is able to dictate range it's able to be faster than the brawling ship it's able to have more range um and a bit less dps but it doesn't matter because the brawling ship can't catch or hit the kaiju ship right brawl is very short range very slow so the kaiju ships will be able to beat the brawling ship right if the any of these ships are able to warp all over the place with impunity, then with a good warp in, the brawling ship will be able to catch the sniper. So the brawling ship will be able to warp all the way to the sniper, lock it down, warp scramble it, warp disrupt it, web a fire, and the brawl has more DPS, more tank, able to engage at shorter ranges, has better tracking at short range, and the sniper will die. Right? So, if the sniper ship is shooting at the kite ship, and the kite ship is relying on one speed to go in one direction to try not to get hit by, say, tackle frigates, for example, uh, and it's not worried about its transversal, that sniper ship will have perfect tracking and will be able to chase off or kill, depending on how good the kite pilot is, um, the kite ship. Um, and to be honest, when a sniper or any ship 
chases off Kaiti or a Kaiti ship that is wanting to dictate range, when the Kaiti ship warps off, in my honest view, it's a victory in and of itself. Because you denied that Kaiti ship a kill. You denied that Kaiti ship's game plan. Right? Okay. So, there's also an additional method that we have um, that is a general rule and is not applicable to every single ship in the game, but as a good rule of thumb. Battleships beat battle cruisers, and battle cruisers beat cruisers. Um, this isn't the case for all ships, for all weapon systems. Uh, for example, um, a battleship like the Vindicator can easily murder any cruiser that gets too close. Uh, so take what I have to say with a pinch of salt. But these are just the general rules. Now, um, using what we know about the early findings and tactics that we uh, that I explained to you, plus the meta that we that we do know about 2v2 plus uh, about the 2v2 abyssals, and this we will tell you about the correct fittings. So let us go. And... Yes, here we go. Right. So. This looks complicated, but I'm going to break it down, okay? So, say you are a brawling ship, right? So, if you're a brawling ship, you're all you're probably wanting to sit at this bubble at zero, waiting for anyone to come in, right? Because that's the fight and that's the engagement you want to engage in, right? So, what ships can it beat at zero? Well, if a kaiti ship that has less tank and less damage comes at you, you will beat it hands down. So if you're brawling and say, I don't know, a syllable, which is a known kite ship, warps in at zero, you'll be able to web it down before it can engage at range, right? It's 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 screwed because it will 100% of the time always land at this point, right? Always, 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 right? And it's the same for sniper ships. So if a Nightmare or a Macarial or another blingy battleship that has no tank warps in at zero, the Brawly ships will kill it. It's not a universal thing. Is that if you're like outnumbered like two to one, obviously you're not going to have the best of days you're not going to guarantee to win the fight even though you're outnumbered two to one but you will absolutely win the its core probably maybe i shouldn't say absolutely but you get the idea and obviously if there is a brawling ship going up against another brawling ship then it's going to be the person with the best effective counter uh the ones with the biggest numbers the one with the most uh e-war Logi, you know, it's it's a toss up between the two. It's a lot more difficult to dictate which one's going to win because they're basically equals. They've got the same game plan. It's the one that has the biggest numbers wins, right? Okay. So what happens with the Kaiti versus the sniper? Um, that really depends on how well the sniper can hit the Kaiti, right? And if the sniper has really good damage and damage application, really good tracking. The kite will die before the kite will be able to get out of the bubble, right? If the kite has really good transversal, it has like an oversized prop mod, or it has some game plan, or it's orbiting really close to the sniper to the point where the sniper can't track, then the kite will win. Um, this is a lot more heavily dependent on the skill and the fittings of these two ships because they're both long range and the only thing that's different is that this one can do slightly more damage and this one do slightly more range and this one just goes fast right it's it's heavily dependent and it can go either way depending on fits and pilot skill it's no just like oh yes absolutely and you know it's, it's still kaita can make a big mistake it can still still burn in one direction out of the bubble, and the sniper could absolutely blap it into next century. That's perfectly reasonable. But when the Kaiti is more safe, because it can dictate the range a lot better than most of these other ships, the Kaiti will probably want to orbit as opposed to try and burn out the bubble quite. Not impossible, 
you know, um, that Cinnabar was a Kaiju ship, as we know, as I ex described earlier. Um, that some people ju uh, put dual props. So that's one cruiser, micro drive, and one afterburner. And the second they use get their afterburner or use their afterburner to get out of the bubble, they employ the micro drive. And then they entice ships and drones to come close towards them and they shoot them, right? So feel free to use a dual prop, um, but expect most fights to happen with, within or around this bubble uh, to get kills, right? You, you could do some trolling activities and annoy them if you so desire. There's nothing against that, but you won't achieve anything either. Okay, so basically the brawling ship, if it's out of range, if the Kai-T can outrange the brawl, it's got more speed, it will kill it. If the sniper has got more range than the brawl and the brawl can't fly back, then the sniper will kill it, right? Uh, if it gets any closer than 50 kilometers, it could be that the brawling ship might have enough tank or might have enough logi or might have enough e war to get out of the bubble before the sniper can get out um but it's again it's highly dependent um but as a general rule of thumb if like this question can you shoot and they can't shoot back to, back effectively you are golden you're in an optimal scenario doesn't mean you can kill them but it means that you've got them sweating and you've got them on the back foot and there's a very good chance that they'll flounder and they'll either die or you can get out of there and they'll need a new pair of trousers. Um, right. So if so, let's say you're defending. Um, if you didn't know already, uh, you can uh, access the ESS. And I'm out of range, but if I click link, there's a five minute timer. Five minutes is not enough time or very little time to think of a counter, organize, get the ships to the acceleration gate, warping together, communicate primaries and stuff like that. You'll probably get a bunch of kitchen sink ships that will all be there trying to kill one thing. And even if you know what's in that bubble because of D-scan, you probably won't have enough time to reship into a particular ship. Maybe. It's highly dependent on your staging area and the location of the ESS that's being raided. If it's like 10 jumps away, you're not going to get there in time. Right? Right. Okay. So let's... It's, it's a heavily simplified model. But when you're thinking about tactics and counter tactics, you kind of need to simplify things a little bit to make the problems go a little bit easier and to think, okay, right, I need this specific range. I need this specific speed. I need this specific tanking system, right? Right. And to that end, um, I made this kind of like uh, spec sheet, as it were, for the fits that you want to build and you want to counter and it's good even if you don't buy a particular fit you know roughly how it works that means you know how to counter it okay so say in like a a multiplayer game you don't like playing a class but you play it a little bit so that means you know how to counter it because you know its strengths and weaknesses this is a similar thing right so what's necessary for all fits afterburner 100 percent, 100 percent needs an afterburner doesn't need to be oversized oversized guarantees more speed but it needs some play, some way to get out of the bubble if, because being an, uh, having no prop mod while in this bubble takes ages and it gives them more formulate, uh, uh, time to formulate a, a, a plan and it, you're just dead in the water. Like Speed is still meta. Speed is absolutely meta. You definitely do want to have some form of a prop mod. Some form of tank doesn't have to be the conventional ones like Shield Arama. It could be if you're sniping, it could be very, you could be very, very far away. If you're Kaiti, you could be really fast. Um, if you are in a cruiser and you're going up against battleships, you mitigate some of the damage. 
uh, by being small, which is SIG tank, which is being signature, so you're very small. So, yeah. So, if I've got, a, you know, an okay brawling ship, what do I want to optimize for? What plan do I need if I'm an attacker to maximize my chances of making myself look and be in a better position than the other person, right? Um, so to min-max, as it were, to get the best out of particular things, that are, and it's the advantage is so overwhelming that no one in time can counter it. So for brawling, I want more tanks. That means I can take more shots and be able to live longer to apply more DPS. I need way more DPS. That means I'm able to kill stuff as quickly as possible. I want webs, that means anything that's kitey can't get away, and I want newts in case there's a person that relies on their capacitor, for example, a logy ship or some person who shoots lasers or hybrid weapons, right? So having that optimization to think of being like, okay, here's a good brawling fit, okay, I've got I've got some form of tank, but I can maybe add a web or I can add this for a bit more tank. You know, um, it's a very simple fit and just apply for a maximum amount of damage as possible. Right? Right. Optimization for kiters. The kiters live and die by speed. They need to have enough speeds. So that means they can beat anything that is trying to catch them. Um, they don't have to be fast all the time. They can slow down their speeds. So that means they're able to shoot at things. But being able to have the option of turning up the speed to be able to get out is critical. Right? Doesn't mean they need to be the fastest thing, but they need to be fast enough to be able to shoot things and for them to die before they're able to catch up with the kite. Um they want more damage at medium range, so they probably want to choose uh T two weapon systems uh or T two ammo options that may be able to benefit at medium range. Uh for example, Scorch ammo is a good uh option. And also long range e wars. So there's a couple of people that have been uh, using these sites orbiting at 30 to 50 kilometers, and they're yeah. using e war like sensor dampeners or tracking dampeners or s something of the like. So that means they're able to dictate the range. And like I said in this, can you shoot and they can't shoot back, it back effectively? Optimal. Right. So they're using one of their mid slots to say, I can damage you, but you can't damage me. A lot like these two options that went out to be king of the meta, essentially they're able to apply more damage and have none in return. And over the space of 30, 40 seconds, that really, really adds up. Right? Right. Okay. Let's have a look see. Right. Optimization for snipers. So the more range, the. Um, you have, so the more range, the better your guns track because they need to travel less. So, uh, more tracking is helpful as well, but probably the range is probably the most important bit. Uh, more damage at that range. So if you have the skills for T2 guns, you can use T2 ammo. And when you use T2 ammo, there was a recent buff and T2 ammo damage. So think about using that maybe. And also an escape fan. So this phantasm has a cloak, right? You can't use it in this bubble. But this bubble is 75 kilometers. Snipers can shoot way outside 75 kilometers of fit, right? So I can go outside this bubble and the this uh, penalty uh, of not being able to cloak is disabled. So I can happily sit in this bubble and cloak, right? Right. So anyone who enters the system, I can start shooting. But say, basically, there's a lot of ships that are sniper ships that are there to counter me, and I need to get out of there. That's quite simple. You just either don't uncloak, because they can't find you. I mean, trying to search in a 75 kilometer bubble, that's going to be impossible. Or you can just warp off, you know? Like, it's 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 pretty easy. Um, and yeah. And then, also, there's, a, there's another option as well. Because of an objective... Um, there are going to be people who try to cheese the objective. They don't rely on a fight. They're looking to get no fight whatsoever. Uh, this happened with Fozzy Sol, 
and it's called troll, to troll toasting. Um, I don't think troll essing has the same uh, catchiness to it, so I'm not going to call it that. But <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to call it that whatsoever. Um, but I'm just going to call it troll slash speed fit. So this phantasm is a good example of a troll test speed fit. It doesn't want to get any fights whatsoever, but it has a, a bonus to afterburner velocity. This phantasm can access the ESS. It can look at local. It can look at the local D scan and see which threats are coming. And if anyone comes, then it will run away and then go to another system or hide or anything like that, right? Right. So those are possible. And yep, uh, if you want the cheaper version of this, you can use a stabber. So uh, that's everything I have to say about uh, chapter one. You can see this little troll here. Uh, that's everything I've said about chapter one, and now we're going to go into fittings really, really quickly because I spent a good half an hour on this. Last time I tried to record this, it turned out terribly. It went really boring. I don't want to bore you guys, um, but I, I gave an example for each one of these fit types. Uh, I've got like uh, like 30 more that I could show you, but these are these are just examples of what you could do. So. This is an example of a kitey fit, right? It's it's more it's somewhere between kitey and snipey, but this is a good example of a kitey fit. The Osprey Navy issue. Now, the Osprey Navy issue is a caracal on steroids. It can it has more power grids, so you could do a lot more crazy things with it. Uh, it has a crazy damage bonus to light missiles, but also kinetic damage as well. So, uh, so it, it's an additional kinetic bonus. So, yes, you can see I put kinetic light missiles in here, right? And also, it can fit a pretty good tank as well, right? Right. So, as you can see, it can, it can go like I, I've got a battleship class afterburner on here, so it goes really fast. It you know it can it can go almost as fast as a stabber. Um, that has a similar fit. So it's very it's you know for for a ship that's you know, not meant for this. It's actually pretty agile. It's got a really good tank. It's got an above average tank for a cruiser. Um, it has an answer to E War because it has a little capacitor booster. To be honest, you don't really need a capacitor booster because it lasts four minutes. And if you like, if you're not getting shot at, you know, you, you don't really need this. To be honest, you can probably fit that with another um, module, like maybe an E War module, maybe, or for example, a sensor dampener, and then block more damage that way for example right um and yeah this is a very good example that essentially can go up to 75 kilometers range or it can trade some of that range in um for tank and it's this it's a very very versatile ship it's very easy to fly because it's missiles you don't have to worry about tracking you just basically keep a uh, stay alive make sure you're in range and this will apply next to full damage um, while there's still missiles in the system. The downside is that the, it has a long reload time, a very long reload time. So when you put in the factor in the reload time, its, it's damage is basically reduced by a third. Um, other weapon systems don't have to worry about that, but the bonuses you get are insane for what you get. You know, it's it like when you see three three nine. Sometimes you see on 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 some fitting window that you're doing a certain amount of damage, but it's not applying. This will apply full damage, hundred percent, hundred percent, right? So that's kind see. That's an example um, using the tactics we've used, where essentially we know light metals were good and we know drones are good, right? Okay, so just using that was like okay, rapid light missile launcher. Okay, that's roughly the fit that we want. And also got a prototype cutting device because it can, just in case it needs to hide or lay a trap. You know? Yeah. And then we've got a uh, Harbinger. So basically this is a sniper fit, but obviously battleships would work better. But the thing is is that our Harbinger can fit really, really long ranges, you know, up to a hundred kilometers. 
and the heavy beam lasers that it uses while it's locked between em and thermal damage has really 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 good tracking um and also because it's a mod it has very high power grid you can fit a battleship after burner on it too why not um <laughs> see you absolutely can um so it relies on instead of having an armor tank it relies on having bulkheads for tank which it can do quite well um and it has up to 100 kilometers range so this is a sniper field it, 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 even if you get out of the bubble you still got 25 kilometers to go until you hit the harbinger and by that point the harbinger's out you know it can just book it like it could just leave whenever or if you really wanted to you could adapt this fit to have a micro jump drive and then to keep on shooting <laughs> you absolutely can do that if you just if you so desire you just have to sacrifice the 100 mn compact afterburner uh put a 10 mn on and then put a micro jump drive on that you absolutely can do that just remember you can only activate that module outside the bubble yes uh the tracking computers are here to optimize for the snipers more range and more tracking right so you want to be as far away from that center as possible you want to be as far away from that beacon because the further away you are the more that you can apply damage yeah yeah cool so you know we've got a heat sink you can put more heat sinks here if you so desire it's not a problem um if you're feeling greedy and you've got two optimal range scripts and then i put a tracking speed script there because of stacking penalties so just keep that in mind and you can obviously look at the graphs and just be like okay right this is the ideal damage i want to deal but what if it goes up against the osprey navy oh that's not great but actually i'm at 100 kilometers and actually that would be enough um and as the the second it wants to turn it will apply a lot more damage and for you know against any other ship the Osprey near the issue will have no problem evading anything. Battleship guns, but it's just in this particular get case, the Harbinger has really, really, really good tracking and really, really good range. Combine that too, you get an excellent sniper platform. Right, so I've been a lo looking at a lot of Beyond B streams, um, and Beyond B uh, does a lot of brawling ships. Uh, this is a good example of a, of a brawling ship so this one as you can see by the weapon dps and the drone dps it relies mostly on the blasters uh, if you want the highest dps in the game you use neutron blasters flat out so this is a do or die we have to kill this ship at whatever cost um and it will engage at zero or in this case three kilometers right so it will absolutely mess up everything and it nearly does a thousand dps which is insane uh, for for something that costs around about 50 million isk it's 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 it nuts um also if you're listening to this please don't sue me uh, i really like your fits and i've got most of them safe um but if you're looking for counters to this particular fit then you're looking to get rid of these neutron blasters by using stuff like energy neutralizers and the like right so yeah um they don't need speed they're already at their optimal so they've got a 10 minute after burner they've got minimal shields they've got a web of fire just so anything that lands right on this beacon they can web down and kill very easily right so and then we've got the the, the stabber but basically this is the stabber fit yeah, it's got an advertised prop mod on it it's got no guns because it doesn't need it um it's cheap and you know if you want to cheese the system here you go like if <laughs> you know like put put you know even even like if you want to get extra troll just put just put a little little cloak on there there's a little this is cloaked now yeah so you go outside the bubble if you're not locked you can just go cloak yeah why not um so as you can imagine this is very very annoying um and you can see that all of these ships have a plan they have an engagement range so this wants to engage it inside the bubble you know at like 60 to 75 kilometers this wants to be outside the bubble around about like 90 100 kilometers this wants to be at zero and murder your face before it can murder you and this just wants to run away you can see they all have a plan right so what's the answer if you're defending this is where it gets a little bit more complicated um 
I've been messing around with a bunch of bits and tinkering with them, and the best I came up with is this. Let's have a look see. As you can see, I have 32 fits for the Praxis. Like I, I, I have like hundreds of fits right now. And as you can imagine, uh I may or may not have a problem. Uh let's open, open this up. So this is a uh, so I'm gonna explain this bit by going back here, right? So if I go to this bit and it shows that the battleships beats the battle cruisers beat the cruisers. Normally the battleships doesn't have a a good time against the cruise against the cruisers, but there is a particular scenario where the battleships absolutely trounces the cruisers, and also by extension trounces the battle the battle cruisers and also trounces itself, and it it's just all like a, a sad scenario and like there's like people dying in the street and it's like no no this place is so big help and the, this guy's on like fire and he's just like ah and it's like. No, oh no. Anyways, um, got a bit sidetracked there. Ignore the man on fire. It doesn't look like a man, but just assume it's 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 a it's a person. Uh, gender not known. Uh, assume that this weapon system is very very versatile, and it relies uh on a similar vein to the caracal, but there's a battleship version of it which uses heavy missiles, and this is a rapid heavy missile launcher. It doesn't apply nearly as well as light missiles, but the DPS damage you get is so insane that you can't ignore it. And because it's a battleship, it has way more EHP. <laughs> so it, it, it's out. It's 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 this has it, this is insane. And also, um, it uses drones as well. So I've I've, I've got some I've I've got some heavy drones. I've I've got some snipey drones. You know, it's it's whatever your heart's desires. But here, uh, let's say, so this this is a potential solution. We'd be like, I have no idea what I'm facing up against. This will be a good counter to everything that's currently in the meta. Currently, right? All right, meta may change. We'll see. So you've got a, a missile system that is immune to nukes. You've got a pretty tanky uh, tank. You've got lots of damage. And you've got enough range for potentially sniping. So, say this praxis goes up against. Let let's let's do this, let's let's do this in order. So let's say let's say it's it's this praxis against the brawling ship. So it warps in. So this 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 praxis is defense praxis. It warps in. It can't dictate the beacon range. It will always lead to this beacon at zero, and it will be facing against the ship at their optimal range that at the get at the range they want to uh, get in so say it goes up against the thorax right a thorax and this thorax is very angry right right so assume one to one uh, for this as well so even though so this praxis has four times the health as the thorax it's, it's insane this is four times the health uh, um and also even just with the heavy missiles alone it does similar damage to the thorax right so that means by the maths the praxis should be able to kill four thoraxes before a thorax can kill a praxis right so the praxis can out theoretically fight outnumbered four to one right and break even obviously that's not the case because the praxis weapon system has a flaw just like the rapid light missile launcher where its dps is heavy like it has a really really long reloading time right but if you want the fight to sh like so most fights last around about like 30 seconds to a minute really before they're like summarily decided um especially when you've got a lot of numbers involved right right and no logic. There's been there's been no logic. It's just been everyone. Just it's just like yeah. It's like there's been some spider tanking, um, but there's just been a lot of like bashing heads together and a lot of destruction and mayhem. Uh, that may change in the future. But say this praxis like it's able to fire off for a good minute or so before it needs reloading. It will be able to do fifty thousand damage before it's able to reload. 
of a, of a missile type of your choice. It doesn't have to be Inferno. It could be EM. It, it you know it doesn't have to be that way. And because it's a thorax and it's a zero and it's 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 going nowhere. Hell, you could if you have time, you could even use the Fury missile to do even more damage. <laughs> Why not? Um, but let, let's 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 assume that you have no idea what you're facing up and you're using just faction ammo, just just for the sake, of it, right? And you're not even using your drones. You, you can use drones if you want to. You can use ogres. Um, I should probably fit the ogres for something else like hammerheads because it'll probably be a lot more useful. But just to give a good example, that it could do 1500 DPS. It, it's insane, right? Also, it has a spare high slot. And because it's a battleship, it can has the capacity to fit large modules. For example, it's got this large shockwave charge. But also, you can put a nuke there. And because the neutron blasters are heavily reliant on cap, you can put a newt on this and then it will give an additional pressure that essentially the thorax has around about anywhere between 30 seconds and a minute before it will be completely capped out unless it has an answer to that capacitor warfare. So again, it's an additional pressure on that thorax, right? Um, yeah. Um, so say this praxis goes up against a sniper. Right, well, this is pretty easy. It's got loads of PHP, and it can hit up to 75. Uh, and, and also, it has drones as well. They can also hit to 75. Oh, and also, you can change one of the missile scripts to missile range, and it'll hit up to near like 87.5. Um, so it, it it's 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 an it's an effective sniper ship. It really is. It's it's really deadly. It will it will kill stuff, you know, nearly a hundred kilometers. It will do it. Um, it's nasty. It's really nasty. Um, and say once against the Kaiti, well, basically it's just how well these heavy missile launchers do damage against the, like a hundred MN ship. Uh, so if we go into graphs again, so this is the ideal damage. We'll get rid of the wardens. Actually, no, we'll keep the wardens. We'll keep the wardens because it's extra damage. And then we will go against an Osprey Navy issue that will try the Kytus. Now, 300 damage doesn't seem well, right? 300 damage, roughly. It's not a lot of damage at all. But when you think about it, the Osprey Navy issue is also 300 damage, right? And that's assuming it doesn't even have to reload, right? So it's, it's like if it, it loses a third of its DPS, if it does do that, right? So... This is really, really good damage application against a cruiser that's going 1500. You know, I went through a lot of fits. I went through a lot, and basically, the heavy, okay, the the rapid heavy missile launchers aren't the best system. It would probably be something like a harbinger, like 100 kilometers out, or some other really sniper build. But if you've got no choice and you're at the beacon and you're fighting up whatever, then basically, like, it's a really good answer. Um, it's not the best answer, but it's good enough. You know, it will take damage and it will have to get out in 100 seconds or less, or it will die without logic support, right? Right. So it's not the best answer, but if you bring, let's say, like an equal number of practices or other similar ships that are kind of this kind of like jack of all trades against an enemy an enemy that essentially isn't really used to that then they're going to you're, you're not going to have a single loss um logi helps um e war helps but uh not nooting um it depends on the scenario so nooting helps with short range sometimes and sometimes it's smart bombs depending on what their main damage weapon system is um You've got, and then you've got long range E war, like the sense of dampening that goes against the Kaiti and also the sniper ships as well. So that really helps as well mitigate damage. And it goes back to the point of like, can you shoot and they can't shoot back? Uh, can you shoot and they can't shoot back effectively? You can control this. You can control this and you could be like, they can't, okay, I'm, I'm circling this in flame, but they can't shoot back effectively. You can affect this using E war, right? E war. And you don't need an E-War bonus ship. You don't need to. Um, you can you you can use the Hydro Track that can have every single ship have a sensor dampener. Um, there was another fit. And even you can use E-War ships as PvP ships. 
Uh, the Arbitrator. This is another Beyond BFET that uses a mixture of drones and rapid light missile launchers alongside a bit of uh, remote reps to do a lot of brawling damage and have a lot of EHP for what it could do. And this is sustained damage as well, because when you think about it, the, the, the most of the damage came from the infiltrators and they're very difficult for you to kill them in time before they kill you. So, you know, this is all food for thought. Um, the main weakness of this praxis, like I said before, um, it takes a long time to reload. Um, but if you bring like a critical mass of these, basically half the field is gone before they're able to fight back. You know, usually with these raiding gangs, there'll be no more than 15, usually you say like five, five, 10, maybe even one. So, you know, you can probably get like 15, 20 people you know, they're all ready to do, do like a Donny Brick if they know they'll win. All in practices, going to Wooga. Um, the, another weakness is it's that it's slow. It's slow to walk about. It won't be able to survive gate camps or pipe bombs. But if you're controlling the space right, you won't be able to get, you know, you'll be fine. Right? Um, if you need to get to a position, a place a bit quicker, um, you can use covert sinos. Um, no one's really been using this tactic yet, but just if if you need to absolutely over all else, throw ISK at the problem and make it go away, be able to um, be able to counter quickly and effectively and very quickly, then you can either use a Pilgrim or you can also use a Loki as well. So let's have a look at the Loki. Here we go. So these can uh, be jumped in using covert sinos. They've got covert ops cloaking devices. Um, this one newts everyone to high heavens and has a reasonably good damage. Um, and also has a 100 m and after burner, um, just in case it needs to fight kitey stuff. You know, just in case. Uh, you can change this fit to whatever you so desire. There's lots of excellent examples on uh, Z Killboard. Most of these ideas I got off Zed Killboard, looked at Lost Mouse and said, okay, right, that's a good baseline for what I want. And then also you've got the Loki as well. Um, Loki uses rapid light missile launchers. Again, really annoying to ha uh, like deal with. Can hit up to 70, uh, 73 kilometers. It's insane range. It's insane damage for what it does. It's got drones as well. Um, if you haven't figured already, like I'm using this meta and looking at the weapon systems, it's like, okay, what's the most unfair and unfun to fight? And just using it the optimal fits for a specific role in playing that. And in this case, this is what I came up with. Is this the most... Is this the most tank for a, a cruiser? No, not really. Um, it's actually kind of a weak battle cruiser in terms of that size, but the damage it does um, and how quickly it can respond... You know, it's, it's pretty good. Um, also, don't uh, count uh, heavy assault cruisers as well, because at any time a heavy assault cruiser can use its unique T2 damage control that gives them near immunity and like ridiculous resists for about 10 seconds. So they can last a lot longer in fights. Um, I've seen them used to great effect to as FC, ship, uh, FC ships. The FCs can't get headshot. Um, and also, just remember that, um, yeah, basically, you will always be fighting one idea against another, right? And if you want to win more scenarios and you want to be more versatile and you want to have more tools in your tool belts, that usually comes at a premium and that usually costs more ISK. If you want to have fun, fly a Vexer. Fly a caracal, lose it, don't care, right? Um, but yeah, um, that's all I have to say. Um, I will, if this video gets launched, and I hope it gets launched because I, I made I'm, I made a bit of an accident. I will put in the comment section all these fits that I put here today, uh, so you can put it in your own pipe and mess around with it. These aren't perfect fits, it's just an idea of like what I wanted to do and what parameters I wanted to fit with this to make it optimal. There might be more optimal solutions. The meta is not figured out, but this is the meta that I'm thinking of right now.
So um, thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something. That man is dead. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, stay classy. Also, I'm not editing this. <laughs> it tripled it tripled the the file size. For some reason, I haven't figured it out, but stay classy, everyone. <laughs>